Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Today, I want to spend a few moments addressing a question that has been posed to me by a variety of people as of late. And that question is, do I still personally feel welcome in the tabletop role-playing game hobby? I promise I will answer that question in just a bit. But there are a few things I'd like to discuss first. Now, none of this is scripted. This is all off the cuff. And at no point do I discount the experiences that people have had being gatekept from the hobby or just having a terrible time at a game table. I understand atrocious things have taken place at conventions and behind closed doors at game publishers. I don't pretend that these things haven't happened, nor do I pretend that they don't still happen. But if I'm going to answer, if I personally still feel welcome in the tabletop role-playing game hobby, I can only approach that question from my point of view, through my experiences. Now, I will get to that answer, but as I mentioned, there are a few things I'd like to talk about first. And... Initially, there are a couple of like tropes that have been floating around social media as of late, which I honestly think are kind of like two sides to the same coin. And the first side is the other is ruining my hobby. Yes, right now it's pink haired druids are ruining Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I hate to break the folks, but for decades, all of geek culture has been ruined by somebody, according to somebody else. They're ruining Star Wars. They're ruining Star Trek. Xeno Warrior Princess mocks all tenets of fantasy literature. It wasn't the other who ruins anything. The only people who can ruin something are the people who create that something. So if D&D is going to get ruined, it's going to be ruined by the people creating content for Dungeons and & Dragons. And the reality is, even they can't ruin it because there has been so much published over the years, not just for D&D, &D, but for a ton of other role-playing games, that you would need multiple lifetimes to even try to play a tiny percentage of everything that's been published. So to claim that certain people who are not content creators are going to ruin D&D &D, is absolutely ridiculous. As is people who are, you know, trying to play it off as if, oh, you know, somebody came through the back door and now they're forcing us at gunpoint to play thirsty sword lesbians at our table. Or the garage door was left open and now we have to play this role-playing game authored by this right-wing extremist. You know that's BS. Everybody knows that is BS. Because the reality is, the vast majority of people out there, gamers, and we'll say all gamers, not just tabletop role-playing gamers, all gamers out there play with their family and friends. That is the vast majority of gamers. They play with family and friends. They're not being forced to game with anybody that they don't want to game with. Because most gamers do not attend conventions. If they do attend conventions, some of them don't play games there with anybody other than their friends. They don't play with strangers. They don't get into events. They go to conventions so they can meet up with friends from around the country and they play games with them. They also don't go to your friendly local game store to play because a friendly local game store for many of them is a luxury that they do not have. So a great many people play just with family and friends. So to pretend that you're being forced to game with people who you don't want to game with is bullshit. Now, there are a lot of people out there that I have encountered, thankfully, 
when I say a lot, I don't mean a majority of people. It's a tiny minority. But there are enough of them who seem dead set against inclusion and diversity. And I'm sorry, that is a very sad thing in my opinion. But the thing is, those same people are against inclusion and diversity in all things in life. Not just their tabletop role-playing game. So let's talk about the flip side of the coin, because then we also have the trope of when old white guys like me are gone from the hobby, the hobby will be far better for it. Now, I understand that this mainly stems from the representative from Wizards of the Coast going on a show hosted by African-American gamers and saying words to the effect of when Old white guys like him get out of the hobby. The hobby will be much better for it. I kind of look at it where it's somebody who goes on a show in the wake of the open game license fiasco, try to overcorrect, and let's be very honest, is pandering to the audience. And people see through that. The audience, I guarantee, saw right through that. But do you honestly think Wizards of the Coast would like to see old white guys or just white guys in general disappear from Dungeons and Dragons? Certainly not. Because, once again, I hate to break a fact to you, but the majority of gamers are white guys. Now, they may not be old white guys, but they are white guys. So Wizards of the Coast doesn't want them to disappear because... If they disappear, Wizards of the Coast will probably disappear. Now, of course, that does not mean that we can't be more inclusive and more diverse within our hobby. That is certainly the case. We could certainly be far more inclusive and diverse. But come on, really? There are very few people involved in the tabletop role-playing game hobby who would like to see old white guys disappear. It's just a fact. Something else that's just a fact is we have a silent majority of gamers out there, and all tabletop gaming I'll include in this, not just role-playing games. There's a silent majority, and yes, I know that term reminds me of Richard Nixon even though I was just a little kid when he was president. I'm old, I'm not that old. But we have this silent majority who we just want to have a good time with our family and friends. We want to grow the hobby. We want to be more diverse. We want the hobby to be more inclusive. That is the vast majority of gamers out there. But nowadays, like all things in this world, We have to have these fringe elements at the edge of each extreme who are very vocal. So they come across as being far larger in number than they actually are. So we have the folks on one side who feel that, uh, oh, well, you know, this hobby is being ruined because the other is being included. And then on the other extreme, we have the folks out there who are like, oh, yeah, all these white guys are actually neo-Nazis. That's why they like the old school renaissance, because they're Nazis. Neither of those extremes are true. So just like I ran across a story from someone claiming this is true, uh, and they are an old white guy, that they went into a game store, and while they were in that game store, an employee of that game store came up to them and told them, when old white guys like you are gone from the hobby, the hobby will be better for it. Or words to that effect. Geez, that sounds really familiar. Where did that come from? Now, is it impossible that that happened? No. Do I think that happened? Absolutely not. Because... If you're an employee of a game store and you said that to a customer, 
That'd be the last thing you'd say in a store, really, because it's not as if tabletop game stores have, you know, these huge profit margins. They don't. And most people who run a game store do it because they love the hobby, not because they, they're going to get rich from it. So I highly doubt an employee of the store said that to anybody walking in the door. Now, I have gone to game stores and I've had terrible customer service. That, that is par for the course sometimes. And I don't chalk it up because I'm a white dude. Because the person who was providing terrible customer service or no customer service was also a white dude. So I highly doubt it was racially driven. I think it was just driven because the customer service is lousy. And let's be honest, our hobby does attract people who are not necessarily extroverts or sometimes kind of socially awkward. It's just a fact. It's not a big deal. But because I wasn't taken care of or addressed when I walked into a game store, didn't mean that I thought, oh, it's because I'm an old white guy. It's like I've had bad experiences at conventions and at game tables. It didn't make me think, wow, I'm not welcome in the hobby. It just was something I chalked up to, hey, you know what? Somebody's being a jerk. And yes, there are jerks in all walks of life. And we have to learn to deal with that. But Unfortunately, nowadays, it seems like everybody's skin is tissue paper thin. Thankfully, mine isn't. So, to answer the question, do I personally still feel welcome in the world of tabletop gaming and tabletop role-playing games? My answer would be yes. Yes, I do. I always have. Now, you could chalk that up to me being a white dude. So, yeah. I guess I would probably be welcome. And I guess I had that going for me. But nowadays, as an old white dude, I still feel just as welcome in the hobby. Now, like I said, you run into jerks. It happens, but it doesn't mean that the hobby is looking to get rid of people like me, regardless of what that employee at that game store says. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like the video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because it'll not only let you know when I upload original videos such as this, it'll also inform you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Thank you very much for taking time out to check the video out. And until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.